Hey there, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team, and in today's video, I'm super excited to bring you the alpha preview of our upcoming font library system. Dealing with fonts can be a bit of a headache because all the different things you need to do if you want to load them locally. You need to modify a style sheet, enqueue the files, and do a lot of things that are quite honestly a headache to do. But now in the latest version of Generate Press Premium, we have a font library system built in. And now we can see in our appearance options, we have the font library. So let's go ahead and click on that. The first time you load up this font library, it's going to ask you for consent to reach out to Google fonts because what's gonna happen here is when we install a Google font, Generate Press is gonna reach out to the Google font servers and then download those font files locally to your website server. And what that means is that your Google fonts are going to be served from your website directly and not from the Google font CDN. This has massive benefits because there is no privacy or security concerns of your website pinging Google for the fonts every time. The other huge benefit of this system now is that because your website is loading the fonts locally, you're not reaching out to Google servers, which means that when you're using tools like PageSpeed Insights or GT Metrics, and you have an issue with render blocking resources, a lot of times those can be your fonts loading from remote servers like Google. This feature is going to eliminate that entirely. So if you're not already loading your fonts locally, there's a lot of benefits to doing so, like I've mentioned in terms of security and privacy, as well as performance. So what we're gonna do here is go ahead and click on install Google fonts. And now what we can do is go ahead and search for our Google fonts. So in this case, I'm gonna go with one called Ubuntu, and we're just going to click on this. When we do so, it's gonna prompt us to decide what all of the various font weights and styles do we need here. So in our case on this website, let's say we maybe want the normal 400, 500, and 700. You can pick and choose as many of these as you want, but it's a good idea to only select the ones you're actually going to use. So we'll go ahead and install and we can see it's quickly downloading that and it's already done. So what we can do is click on our font library tab and now we have this Ubuntu variant installed. So there's a little bit more we can do with this particular font face. And in a moment, I'll show you what it's like to upload your own custom font as well. So what we can do now that we have this Ubuntu font installed is we'll click on it. We can see all the various options that we've selected. And if you need to, you can either remove them or deselect them. And we also have these advanced options down here. So these are good to play with and kind of set from the outset. So with font display, this gives you the option to control what happens if the font can't load for some reason. Now this particular feature is still important now that we're loading it locally, but it's less impactful since it's not loading from a separate third party CDN. In general, you'll find most people choose the font display of swap, which means that instead of there being nothing on the page if the font can't load, it's gonna go to our fallback font until this main font is actually ready to load. So we're gonna set this to swap. Then in the font alias, we can give this a name. So if for whatever reason we wanted to change this to have the word custom in front of the actual font name, we could do that. You might have had a font created for your client specifically or they provided one to you and you wanna give this a custom name, you can certainly do that. Now, when we install a Google font, the font family fallback here is going to be set and provided by that Google font directly. But if you're uploading a custom font file, you will want to go ahead and set this to something. You can see right here, it's defaulted to sans serif, but if we clear this out, the placeholder suggestion would be a sans serif fallback and then system UI font. And we can see what's happening here. It's telling us our font family is going to be Ubuntu and then sans serif as a fallback. And then the last thing we have down here is the CSS variable suffix. So this might be something you'll consider changing if there's a case where this font could potentially change and you're referencing this in places like style sheets and you know other places across your site. This makes it a lot easier to modify these later. So you could you know call this something like primary. And then this variable is going to be referenced. Now you can see that there is a warning down here that changing it after you've already applied it can cause loss of visual styles. So either don't touch it or potentially set it on the front end and then don't worry about it later. So what we'll do here is just go ahead and save. And now I wanna take a look in the Generate Press customizer. So I'll open this in a new tab and we can see that our website here just has the standard fonts. But what we wanna do is go ahead and set it to our Ubuntu styles. So we can come over to the typography option and this looks just like it always has, except now we can see that the Ubuntu font is coming in from the font manager. If I click this, it's going to actually take me to the new Generate Press font library. Outside of that though, if we go add a typography element, like let's say our body, then our font family that we installed of Ubuntu is going to be brought in and we can see that's already changed. And what's so awesome about this is again, this is now loading locally from our site. Now, the other thing we can see here is that because we changed that variable to primary, we can see that's what's referencing this font. So if ever we needed to come back and change it in the font library, it's going to be really easy to update across our site. 
Then if we wanted to target another element like our H1, we could you know, make our font family Ubuntu, and then our font weight can be one of the ones we installed like the 700 font weight like that. And in a matter of minutes, we now have our Google Fonts loading locally from our site and we're getting all the various benefits from that. Now let's take a look at how this works if we upload our own custom font file. So I'm going to simply publish this and close this tab. And here in the font library, again, we're gonna to go to the upload custom fonts. You can see all the various font files that are supported, TTF, OTF, WAF, and WAF2. In general, if you have the option, the WAF2 is the most performant version. So that would be the ideal one to upload. In my case, just for example, I'm actually going to upload a TTF font file. So I'll click on this upload. And then here in my downloads folder, I have a couple of quicksand variants here. I'm going to just simply select all of these, open them up. Font files were successfully uploaded. So if we switch back to the font library, we can see there's our quicksand font and all of the variants that I installed here. So once again, if maybe you didn't need a particular font weight, you could just simply uncheck it or you could delete it entirely. And then all the advanced options that we just took a look at are going to exist here as well. Again, when you upload a custom font, the font family here is not going to have a fallback set. So you definitely wanna consider what that is. A safe bet would just be to use exactly what you see here in the placeholder, the sans serif comma system UI. All right, so we'll just go ahead and save this. And then once again, we'll pop back into the customizer, go to typography. And then now we can see we have both our Ubuntu and our quicksand. So let's just say we wanted to change our body tag to the quicksand. And then let's say we want our font weight to be bolder like 600 and we want our font size to be bumped up a little bit like 1.125 rem. All the normal stuff that you would expect here like weights, text transforms, font size, and all those controls still exist here even with our custom fonts. I'll go ahead and publish this. I hope you've enjoyed this alpha preview of the new font library system coming to Generate Press Premium. If you're interested in learning more, click the link in the description below. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below, and otherwise we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.